Up till now, we've avoided some difficult pH calculations for ill-behaved acid-based systems. And by ill-behaved, I mean those acids that have two or more pKa values within two pH units of each other. In those cases, the assumption that only th the one equilibrium reaction is important is not legitimate. Neither have we dealt with complicated mixtures of weak acids and bases such as a weak acid form and a base form from different families. Fortunately, there are ways of handling these problems, and one of these is known as the proton balance equation. So this is useful when the system is ill-behaved or has close pKa values. It's also particularly useful when components from more than one weak acid-base family are present. So we begin to write a proton balance equation considering the reference form. The reference form is the species that we've added directly to solution. And the reference form doesn't show up in the proton balance equation directly. We're just comparing those species that have gained a proton to balance those that have or lost a proton. So we're just looking at the net change and by looking at the other family members associated with the reference form, we take, keep track of those protons that have been donated or lost to the system. Another way of thinking of it is those things that are proton rich balance those species that are proton poor compared to the reference compound. So it's the winner's balance the losers. Let's begin this by looking at water. And water is an acid-base compound, of course, and so when it dissociates in water, it actually protonates another water molecule. We get the hydronium ion plus hydroxide ion. So this is our reference. Compound, so it won't show up in our proton balance equation. But when we have a hydronium ion, we know that this is gained, so it's proton rich. Now, let's make a point here. Protons in solution don't go around naked, and protein, protonating a single water molecule is probably an, an accurate description either. They're probably hydrated with six or more water molecules. So this is not an accurate description. Let's just talk about this and abbreviate it in terms of H+. So we're, we're saying that the proton-rich species, the hydronium ion, or H+, should show up on the left-hand side because that is something that's gained. And on the opposite side, we have hydroxide. That's a species that represents a loss of a proton from the reference compound. So when we work with water, and that's what we'll do in all these examples, that's where we start. Now, let's consider uh, a strong acid. Let's consider something like HCl. When it dissociates, and we assume it dissociates completely in water, it provides a chloride ion and a hydrogen ion. Well, in a sense, this HCl is our reference compound. So the chloride is the conjugate base. So we start with our equation from water, and we add to it. HCl doesn't show up, but chloride is a proton poor species, so it should show up on the right-hand side. H plus is already in our equation, 
And in a sense, what we're saying is that all of the H plus in solution comes from two sources. It comes from that donated by water and that due to the dissociation of our strong acid. One more thing, let's write this in terms of the analytical concentrations of the things that we've added. So we would say that we've added a certain number of moles or the analytical concentration of HCl would show up in place of the chloride concentration. Now what I mean by the analytical concentration of the HCl would be the original moles of HCl added over the final volume of solution. Let's consider a strong base. We place strong bases on the left hand side. For example, consider adding sodium hydroxide directly to solution. We start with the proton balance for water and we add the analytical concentration of the sodium hydroxide to the left hand side. Now you can think of it this way. We're saying that the hydroxide in solution comes from two sources, that contributed by the dissociation of water and that contributed by adding directly sodium hydroxide to solution. And recall that the by the analytical concentration here I want to correct for the total volume of solution. So we take the original moles of sodium hydroxide added and divide by the total volume of the solution. Now let's consider adding a weak acid such as acetic acid to solution. So it can dissociate to form hydrogen ion and a conjugate base. And let's consider adding the HA form. So this is our reference compound. We start with the proton balance for water. It's always our starting place. And we think about the things other than the reference form. That would be the acetate anion. So this is proton poor, it's lost hydrogen ion, so it should show up on the right hand side of our equation. Now, this is saying that the hydro hydrogen ion has two sources, the hydroxide and amount donated by the weak acid. We might also want to represent this in terms of the analytical concentration and now this is going to take, since this is the amount we dumped in in the HA form, it's also going to take our alpha value for the anion, that is the distribution coefficient or the fraction of what we dumped in that appears now at equilibrium in the acetate form. Let's consider a buffer that's a combination of some sodium or some acetic acid and an equal volume of sodium acetate that have been mixed together. Now, there's an important insight. Work with each ingredient separately first, then combine the PBEs. It's much simpler that way. We just completed the PBE for the weak acid, or for the addition of acetic acid, and we obtained that H plus is equal to hydroxide plus alpha for the acetate anion times the analytical concentration of the amount we dumped in in the form of HA. So that's one PBE. Now let's consider the addition of sodium acetate. Still the same equilibrium process, so we're using the same equation. It's just in this particular case the reference form is the acetate. So we can ignore that in the balanced P proton balance equation. So we start with the proton balance for water again. It's always our starting point. And we say we're ignoring the reference compound. 
if HA shows up in solution, that is more protonated than the reference compound, a reference species, and so it should appear on the left-hand side, on the winner's side. Rewriting that in terms of the analytical concentration of sodium acetate that was added to solution, this species is the fraction in the HA form. So we multiply it by our distribution coefficient for HA and add the other ingredients. So let's take this equation and combine it with the previous equation to get the net overall PBE. So we just sum the two sides with one exception. The H plus and the OH appear in both expressions. They only should appear once in the final expression. So we just write those down and everything else just gets transferred down. So nothing on the left-hand side here. On the right-hand side, we add alpha for the anion times the analytical concentration of the HA form. In this PBE, nothing new on the right-hand side, but we add the alpha for the weak acid form times the analytical concentration of the sodium acetate. Now, in this particular work, we've added equal volumes of the two acid and base forms. So the analytical concentration for the sodium acetate is the number of moles of the sodium acetate, 0.1 molar, times 0.1 liters. So the number of moles over the new solution volume has just a tenth of a liter, or two tenths of a liter. We sum both of them together, and we get a net concentration of essentially half of our starting concentration, 0.05 molar. Likewise, for the analytical concentration of the weak acid, it's the original moles, 0.1 liter times 0.2 molar divided by the net volume, or final volume, 0.2 liters, or a net concentration of 0.1 molar. So we could have a numerical value to substitute back in. So our final equation would be alpha for the HA, which is something we could calculate, and multiply by the sodium acetate analytical concentration. 0.05 and add H plus. That's equal to the hydroxide plus the alpha for the anion and times the analytical concentration of HA or 0.1 molar. Up till now everything we've done could have been handled with our general weak acid equation. Let's take a look at a citric acid buffer. Let's imagine that we have a net concentration of, after mixing some citric acid and sodium acetate, of 10th molar citric acid and sodium acetate of 0.02 molar. Now, citric acid is a particularly difficult uh, situation. It's a triprotic acid, and it has three Ka's, therefore. And the difficult thing about this is that the Ka values are very close together. So you can't ignore the equilibrium between the other species. So we must consider all of them at the same time. That's actually something that we can work with in a straightforward manner with the PBE approach. Here we've added a reference form H3A species. So let's start with the proton balance for water and look at all the other species that might be present. H2A is poor compared to the reference compound. It's a lost proton, so it's on the loser side. 
HA dianion is also poorer in protons than the reference compound. It should appear on the right-hand side. But look, every time H2A shows up, it's lost two protons. We want to take care to note those changes, so we multiply the concentration of HA anion by two. Likewise, when we get the triple anion, it has lost three protons from compared to the reference, so three times the trianion concentration. So in terms of the analytical concentration of the weak acid that we've added, we can replace the concentration of H2A with the alpha for that species times the analytical concentration of the citric acid plus 2 times the alpha for the HA species times the analytical concentration for the weak acid plus 3 times the alpha for the trianion species times the analytical concentration of the citric acid. Sodium hydroxide PBE is we've seen before and just to remind you of that we had the analytical concentration of the sodium hydroxide would be on the left hand side. So the NAT PBE is CNaOH plus H plus equals hydroxide plus alpha H2A CH3A plus 2 alpha HA minus CH3A plus 3 alpha A trianion CH3A. And we can plug in the numerical values for the corresponding sodium hydroxide and citric acid, and the, those are direct substitutions. Likewise, uh, the alpha values for a triprotic system uh, have a denominator that's common to all of them, which would start, which would look something like this. And we can look up all these Ka values in analytical textbook or other reference literature. And the numerator, of course, comes from a term in the denominator. And so let's just imagine that we want the H2A form. That's the second, that's the second species. So it'd be the second term from the denominator, Ka1, H plus squared, etc. This is a rather busy overall combination of equations. If we make substitutions in here, we've got something that's at least a cubic or probably a higher order polynomial to solve. And that kind of thing can be solved directly by programs such as Mathematica, or one can do this by a graphical method or something that's called a numerical solution, and that we'll demonstrate in another lesson.